Welcome to this change of plan video. Yep, it is a change of plans because I was going to incorporate the transition of my Leptotis bicolor that I got from Tokyo World Mark and a current orchids in Belgium. I was going to incorporate it all into an orchid potpourri video. However, I happen to have some viewers that are in the Southern Hemisphere that are now going into spring interested in possibly trying out one or two of their orchids in LECA self-watering or any kind of inorganic growing medium. So based on that, I thought this could actually be a good time to do a how to transition from bark into LECA video. And hopefully I can get the timing right and help those viewers that are interested who are heading into spring to look out for similar signs with their orchids if they want to try and transition one or two of theirs. So Leptotus bicolor, my season is not conducive to transitioning from bark to leka or any kind of transition of media. But I'm not looking at the calendar. It is late September. We're heading into fall, the cooler months of the year. This orchid likes it to be toasty and warm and nice, but I can't go by calendar. I'm looking at the roots. And all these roots are not only greening up nicely, but they're actively growing. So if I don't transition this orchid now, I will be waiting another 12 months, possibly maybe six, to transition her. Six months is not an issue because that will take me into my spring. But again, I do want to make a video, a little bit of a step-by-step -step one using my Leptotis bicolor to encourage and help anybody in the Southern Hemisphere that is now looking to possibly try a transition of an orchid. Let's do it with the bicolor. Let's have a look and see what we've got on the root front. Fundamental soak in calcium, magnesium and seaweed prior to any repot. Calcium and magnesium, great for strength. And the seaweed has the hormones to encourage root growth. And that is exactly what you want. The two complement each other really, really well. So if you're encouraging root growth based on the seaweed, then you can complement that with calcium magnesium, which is also favorable to create strong roots. So prior to any transition or any repot for that matter, it doesn't have to be a transition. Soak in some seaweed, calcium and magnesium to support and encourage the orchid to grow roots. Right, we have a few dead ones in the back here. I already picked out my pot because I don't want to disturb the orchid for a long, long time. So I've got a 15 centimeter pot back there. I've already picked out my leka, which is the small size leka, maybe a centimeter and less because of the fact it is a fine root system. See that? So that determines the size of my leka. Chunky leka would be great for chunky roots from cattleyas and things like that. Right, so I'm contemplating just doing one radical snip snip, getting rid of all the dead roots here. But based on how little root decayed matter is here, and I'm going into inorganic media. I might as well use what I've got here for a little bit of anchoring. It's not going to harm the climate in the pot. Maybe we can pull this one off. It is a bit long. So these come off quite easily. But you know, you can go the radical route as well. And get rid of all the dead roots right here. But I'm not going to do that because at the end of the day, it's not changing the climate in my pot one bit. I want to make sure and see if I can get most of the organic media off, seeing as I'm leaving some of the roots. But if I have the piece of bark clinging onto good roots like this, you can see all those beautiful roots clinging on this bark. I'm not going to mess with it at all. They can stay where they are, stay on the bark. The roots are paramount. They take priority and not the cleaning up process. So basically, no matter what orchid you have, the size of the leka will be dependent on the size of the roots. And I'm going to go with small leka and let's get her potted up. I'm really hoping that all of that was in focus. I'm in a different kind of an angle at the moment. I'm not seeing the screen very well. 
So I'm hoping this is all clear. So I've got my support in here. I have two microfibers because I want a very high wicking potential for this orchid, seeing as the roots are all very, very superficial. So I don't want to encourage a dry top layer too much. Wicking and we're going to create a loop because the roots are very, very superficial. They're not deep enough. They're not going to touch the bottom of the pot. Got my support because I don't want the orchid to in any way jiggle or be messed around when I'm moving her. Abrasions and all that could stop roots from growing. Then what I'm going to do is add water to the brim of the pot because water is a much better weight disperser than my hands or fingers are. And Lekka will purl and pool nicely into the pot gently as well and fill up all the gaps. So we'll just get some of the leka up and over and under that loop. We created it for a reason. Might as well make sure that it is visible. And you see that the water I am using has also got seaweed and calcium and magnesium in it. And that is for the purpose of what I just mentioned earlier, encouraging root growth and supporting the roots that are growing with the Kalmad. I'm not sure if I mentioned how much it's 100 parts per million in total, and that would make it 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium and 40 parts per million of seaweed at 6.3 pH, which is the ideal ratio to be able to absorb calcium and magnesium. So I'm going to position my orchid to the height that I want her, and then just fill up with Lekka. And I'm always super careful with any root tips. And that is what this little potting up method with the water in the pot really helps. Because the leka doesn't crush or just fall onto the roots. It sort of pearls and rolls on nicely, gently. I have my orchid in the center of the pot. That is not standard, but that's what I'm doing. Because of her growth habit, she does have a forward growing growth habit but I don't want to crutch her into the back right now. There is a possibility she may one day grow out the back as well. So I'm just preempting her in the center. And I'm just gonna support her with a little bit of supporting wire. Now, if you're doing this during a time of year, for example, where the weather isn't conducive, but your orchid is telling you this is a good time to repot because of the new roots, then please, please go ahead Listen to your orchids, don't look at the calendar. If it is too cold for the weather, heat mats are a wonderful support system as well. They keep the root, the base, and everything of the pot a little bit more toasty and cozy. But seeing as I am in Southern Spain, I have six more weeks of warm weather, adequate weather for a transition, I can observe the orchid and make sure that she is going to be all right for another six weeks. And if the nights are getting a little bit too cooler, and in my case, I'm talking 20 degrees Celsius and below, for a transition that is already like, you know, additional stress, we don't want to do that. Then I will bring her inside, but I'll leave her because of her high light requirements, I will leave her up against the glass window where the warmth will be exacerbated by the glass. So I'm tricking her little microclimate to be hotter than the ambient climate really is. This all looks very simple and straightforward because this is very simple and straightforward. I know that it looks like I haven't done much to the orchid because I haven't done much to the orchid. I've cleaned up the roots to the best that I would like to have her cleaned up. I don't want to go mad. New roots are a precious commodity. They are the future and they are what is going to determine the success of a transition. So let's just check the base of the rhizome here. Are we all okay with regards to the height? of the orchid in the pot. Yes, we are. We might be a bit low down here. And we can scooch out and away some of the lecker and keep that a little bit more aerated. There we go. Nicely aerated. We have new roots going in the pot. We have small lecker to accommodate a fine root system. And now we wait and we hope that everything will go fine because despite doing all the steps correctly, there's always a 10% element of hope that we need to have that we did the right thing at the right time. In my case, I shouldn't see why this doesn't work. 
especially because of the new root system. When the new roots grow, I do not hesitate. I know it's go time. If for some reason the orchid fails because of other influences, then that is something to be analyzed further down the line. Right now, she is ready to go. She's good to go. The weather is still favorable and that's why I went ahead with it. This was very quick. This was very basic because there is no rocket science behind transitioning an orchid from organic media to inorganic media. However, if you have any further questions, if something wasn't quite clear, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll be very, very happy to elaborate and continue a video series, especially for everyone in the Southern Hemisphere that wants to try this method out and transition their orchid. So we'll continue a video series if you have any further questions. Short, quick, sweet, clean transition. Have a wonderful day. Hope this was helpful. Thank you so very much for watching and please, most important of all, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.